like for me, the guy, something in the water, that guy took me out of the movie too much. Stop playing around, man, just get out. I'm not playing around, there's something in the water. Drive-by movies you're watching. Fresh releases. My name is Blaze. And I am James. And this week, we're talking the brand new film, Alien Romulus. Three, two, one. Alien Romulus is Fetty Alvarez's Alien 1.5, basically. And while scavenging the deep ends of a space station, a group of young space colonizers come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. What is that, you might ask? Well, we all know what a xenomorph is. It's been in media for since the 70s. Alien classic, Aliens, my favorite of the series. Uh, check out our uh, screen scuffle of Alien vs. Predator. Not that movie. The movie, actually, Alien Ridley Scott vs. Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Predator to this day, everything looks fantastic within that movie. The chest burster scene is like one of the most horrific scenes in all of horror cinema. But anyways, though, we're getting a 1.5 movie to Disney, Disney-fi, the Alien franchise. Blaze, what are your thoughts coming out of the movie? 100%. Uh, the Alien Queen is the new Disney princess, I think, right? I was expecting, honestly, that castle in the, in the beginning. <laughs> the film i think disney has has really it's worked the fox merger obviously has worked out really well for them because anything they can just don't want to be associated with like you know the disney castle just throw in the 20th century studios <laughs> logo um and it's and it is somewhat nostalgic just because people remember like that fox intro for, for movies you know with the drums those snares coming in you're like oh nice but um yeah i, I feel like they they really uh kind of change i i wouldn't say like i mean they kind of disney fight it not in like any way where like the obviously what we got was like you know lesser than stuff they really did go there i think thanks to fede's direction you know obviously brings in like a lot of the cool effects that he's used to using in his films and and brings in you know more adult rated material than obviously like a disney movie but i do think in a sense this was kind of formulaic in like we need to follow these specific story beats to make sure that people are engaging with this content the way that they would in the past <laughs> with the past content yeah i mean i would agree with certain parts too um 20th century fox i think is probably as of lately my favorite studio coming out with uh you know wide release movies uh with movies like the first omen uh and hell even prey too that was still a fun movie and so i was expecting this movie to kind of go back to basics basically but my problem is i put fetty alvarez like at a high pedestal which is kind of the downfall of this movie i was looking forward to it just thinking like He's got this. And a lot of people are saying like, oh, Disney probably forced them to bring back uh, CGI characters and everything like that. No, I mean, it was Fetty's idea to bring back one character. It might be spoilers when we get into it. You know, he wrote the script with his partner that he's been writing movies with since the beginning with like the Don't Breathe franchise as well as the Evil Dead remake. Um, and, you know, that was an interesting choice. I see why. And I've seen the letter that the family has put out on bringing back that character, um, which is fun. You know, that's fine. But I don't think anyone was asking for that character ever to come back. And that's not what ruined the movie for me, I guess you could say. I just felt like the uh, I mean, I guess just uh, overall, the pace of the film just didn't fit right for me. And I just went in with higher hopes. And what I got was solid movie but overall kind of forgettable i guess you could say so i just came out kind of disappointed i will say i think that for me the pacing did really work i thought this movie was highly entertaining i thought like aside from maybe the last 30 minutes it was it was highly entertaining i was all for like the kind of interesting things that they were like starting to bring up but it just feels like that last 30 minutes like it just kind of reverted to like when is this movie gonna end i had to go to the bathroom so bad at that point too <laughs> and then dude I, as soon as i i got to the end like i literally left kind of a little bit early because i was like okay this is definitely the end i'm just i had to run you know at that point but yeah i feel like that they were following too many formula like beats i had rewatched aliens right 
before this film and even that i'm like okay there's so many like that i don't think that that's the film that will come to mind for most people when thinking about this movie there's obviously a lot of you know story beats from alien and i feel like this follows alien a little bit more closely but when it comes to like just little throwaway lines there's so many of them from aliens and i'm not specifically talking about you know the one cringe eye roll in your head back line in this film that is just you know akin to terminators uh terminators you know i'll be back line but yeah <laughs> i wouldn't say it was that bad honestly bringing back that line um it was uh, bad, for those dude. who don't know it was they, yeah it was i was cr- my my theater like cheered for it i was not one of them i kind of just like that's funny i like that they did that but then that awkward pause and then the you bitch comes in and i was like no it was fine just the other way like why did they have to add that part in there like uh because that's just such a weird awkward pause and you know there's a lot of other lines repeated that didn't necessarily bother me like bringing back the line uh uh like uh i do hope what's or i do hope for the best for you like i don't like your odds uh whatever um ian holmes says in the first one is brought back in this movie and speaking of that so now we'll get into the spoiler-esque part bringing back ian holm like i guess the family said that Hollywood forgot about Ian Holm in his final years of life and uh, one of his favorite franchises he was a part of was Alien and would have always wanted to go back. So that's cool that he's brought back this in some kind of form. I just don't know who was asking for it and it's also not even the same robot from the first movie. I can see some people getting it mistaken thinking like, oh crap, it's the same android from the first movie. No, that ship is gone. They just uh, found that alien floating in space after the first movie and that's where this movie picks up and that just happens to be the same android with the same mission and with the very god-awful deep fakes i guess honestly i have to say this is always a pet peeve when it comes to the movies and sadly it's it's been like i think solely a disney issue if you think about it and i and i know you had mentioned you know that this wasn't like maybe this wasn't their option to, to do this you know this is fetty's idea but if I look at all the movies where they've brought somebody back from the dead, I don't care if it's AI or CGI. For me, it's just like, I hate this whole thing of like bringing back people for like a synthetic character, whether it's AI Absolutely or CGI. Though. I think this, at least that first shot we were talking about it earlier, I think didn't didn't kind of work or maybe my eyes are adjusting to the uncanny valley of that character, you know, being there. But then, like, it's okay later on. It looks a little bit better, obviously, than Grand Moff Tarkin in Rogue One. But even that, like, literally takes me out of the whole movie. Just a full CGI character of somebody that we've clearly seen before on Celluloid. It just, yeah, I, I, I just hated that whole aspect. I think it's okay here. Like, it works in a way. But it still does take me fully out of the film and be like, oh, my God. Like, what do, like why do we have to always do this like there's no one there like you said clamoring for it it's not impressing anyone ever like right it's it really doesn't matter it's it's kind of ridiculous but would it have been better if it was michael fassbender in the flesh like i think i would have rolled my eyes at that as well because i'm not a david (laughs) fan yeah i mean i think the best bet would have just been to have another version of andy right then and there that would have like threw Mm -hmm. some confusion in andy and would have been like oh i feel bad for this android i wish i could have like helped him or something that would have made kind of like him getting the parts from that original android a little bit more intense i feel like uh, after he's kind of like resonated seeing like a version of himself destroyed but yeah you could have also gone with any other living actor i i forgot i didn't bring it up in my letterbox review i've mentioned that you could have brought back david or bishop living actors that are still existing today but i also forgot winona ryder was even an android in uh, alien resurrection that would have been like i think that would have been even more fun uh and less distracting still like it didn't take me out or ruin the movie for me like how a lot of people are ruining i like for me the guy something in the water that guy took me out of the movie too much and i just hated him and i wanted him to die the whole movie and it takes like an hour and like 15 minutes for him to finally go it's not even that satisfying he just like you know loses some flesh from acid and it starts to go through him and kills him but you know that guy could not stay in the whole movie and i was just like that's 
all I can think of from this movie. The sample in the water. I'd say that this was movie was highly entertaining, but the more that I just think about like just how many story beats there are i think something that bothered me was even just the way that characters are acting almost feels like inauthentic at times like they're literally just trying to act like a character from the original movies specifically thinking about eileen Wu's navarro character literally is just acting like uh the lieutenant from the the second film at certain points in this movie like she's acting like that lieutenant in aliens when shit starts hitting the fan she's just freaking out like non-stop and i'm just like this is just straight up uh what was it like lieutenant G gorman or whatever from aliens and it just it just i don't know it just didn't ring true like these characters weren't really characters that were built out in the in the course of this movie like we really get like our character development there with andy of course and rain but aside from all the other characters they're just there to almost progress the story in a less fun way than like a actual slasher film would do like thinking about like a stupid friday the 13th movie where we get these you know these obvious stereotypes of characters but this we just have like right. five characters that are literally like jello almost you know like yeah xenomorph flavored gelatin but yeah i'd, I'd say that uh when it comes to that last 30 minutes though oh my god like seeing that creature i got that spoiled to me like scrolling through uh tiktok randomly somebody had like set footage of that i'm like how is this even out there like yeah. behind the scenes footage is out there already for the final scene in the movie like that's crazy i don't know if someone was on set but or if it's like a behind the scenes on on youtube featurette but that's ridiculous that that would be out there right uh so one thing i really hate is like uh spoilers without spoiling the movie like tweet trend or tiktok trend where you post four images where it's like oh i'm not spoiling the movie but you know for those who have seen it you know what i get and one of the things i saw was the seven foot seven basketball player mm -hmm. and uh so he actually does play that guy Mm -hmm. uh that uh creature at the end of the movie and then there's also like the the architects from prometheus and stuff i was like you guys are spoiling them like like even before seeing the movie i knew what to expect from just those two images for the most part and then also there was an image of like bilbo baggins as well too and i'm just like okay they brought back ian holm all right there's gonna be some kind of engineer in the movie i didn't understand the basketball guy at first but like you know so, so, seeing an image of ian holm and and the engineer is very obvious so like okay i know what to expect from romulus now so i hate that trend just uh talking to anyone who posts that trend thinking that they're being clever and funny you are still spoiling the movie um but yeah i mean i guess what i was tired of is just the unexpected fourth act but we kind of expect it from this franchise because it happens in both alien and alien do you think everything's done and we kind of expect the alien to still be there and i liked that they went in a different direction with bringing an all new different kind of creature not the biggest fan of the design like the closest thing i find with this movie with star wars is how all of a sudden people love the prequels to star wars and now all of a sudden with the alien movies everyone's such a huge fan of prometheus and alien covenant i know those movies got decent reviews and did have a lot of people who liked them but i hate how now everyone's saying those movies are ambitious and amazing i wish we got a third one and ridley scott got to finish his vision those movies are terrible and ruin the franchise if anything not that i'm a huge advocate for this franchise whatsoever uh alien and aliens are still great movies and there's stuff i like about each movie honestly even prometheus and alien covenant but those are not good movies and seeing the like that little homage with the creature design just like that took me out if anything but it's like if they brought jar jar binks back in like a future it's basically the same thing like they brought back a character design where you're like i hated that like just stop yeah. like don't bring that back exactly yeah that was my main problem i was like i would have preferred it to look more like the creature from alien resurrection which i'm not even a fan of that design but like if you're gonna go with the humanoid hybrid like i would have preferred that uh, but i understand why they went with that prometheus design but just didn't work for me um but yeah i agree with the pacing of bringing in that final 15 minute act like it was scary that first image and there is a good jump scare with the creature mm -hmm. but yeah overall just felt unnecessary and just felt like check mark i mean the film i'll admit like it was a fun ride i don't know if i'm gonna rewatch it because i can't like divorce myself from just realizing that it feels like 
it was like AI generated beyond just Ian Holmes face, like all the story yeah. beats that it had to hit every single like line and thing like to merge all of the alien films into one super alien fan film, it felt like. But right. yeah, I mean, obviously like all fan films are fun, but when you like really sit down and start thinking about it, you're like, just why, what was the point? Like it didn't bring anything interesting to the story of like alien or to that you know Whalen yutani universe um that maybe we'd like to see something different i'll at least you know give ridley scott his flowers by saying like at least prometheus and stuff like brought in new things into that universe and a little bit more lore mm-hmm. and backstory where this one i felt like just kind of mud- muddied the waters really yeah, I mean, I'd say there's some cool sequences within the movie to make it worthwhile checking out. And overall, like, yeah, it sounds like uh, we're picking it apart pretty hard. But, you know, it deserves it, honestly. But it's still overall a fun watch, I guess you could say, just for mainly like some of the zero gravity action sequences, as well as the very silent face hugger scene. Um, those scenes were very intense and, you know, were the sequences that I was looking forward to within the movie. And they definitely like, you know, hit that checkbox of just like making me super stoked especially in seeing in 4dx i didn't bring that up i saw the movie in 4dx again i'm addicted after seeing twisters um not gonna be a necessity but i think it was a fun movie and we're checking out in d box or 4dx if you have the opportunity but yeah anyways though what are your thoughts on the movie let us know in the comments below because everyone's got an opinion on this movie is it a, a step in the right direction or did it backpedal or is it just like, you know, fine in the middle, like how we're saying? Let us know in the comments below because that's a great way to help support the show. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to get all of our latest updates. And speaking of updates, be sure to catch all our social media links down below. We got Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and our own personal letterbox accounts. That'll conclude this week's episode. Tune in next week for a brand new video. Thank you.